In this chapter, we're going to be studying linear relations. In this lesson, we're going to look at word problems that use linear relations. Okay, hey everybody. So in this lesson here, we're going to be working with word problems and linear relations. Now, what we're going to be doing here is really nothing new. In, in some previous lessons, we did all this. Okay, uh, we considered the significance of the slope. And remember when we're considering the significances of the slope, we need to consider the units for the x, uh, the y-axis over the units of the x-axis. You need to compare them. In fact, that's the only way you can really make sense of the slope in that, in that whatever context you're working with. The y-intercept is where it crosses the, the y-axis and it's, it's where the x-coordinate is zero, which in most cases here, the, it's gonna be time on the, uh, on the x-axis, which means that that y value is typically a starting value, okay? That's what it represents. Now, in any case, what we're gonna do is this lesson here, those, those little details where we're interpreting these things in light of the situation, that's gonna be the main focus of this lesson. Let's take a look at some examples. Okay, everybody, let's take a look at this question here. It says, David is a salesman. He earns $850 per month plus 5% of the commission on his sales. So what we're going to do is he's going to map out his, his uh, earnings here by identifying, well, what would happen here if I was able to sell this much, sell this much, sell this much, and so on, okay? So let's take a quick look at this. Now, remember, he starts off by earning $850. So he earns $850, and then we're going to add, okay, uh, 5% commission on a sale. So we're going to add 5% and we're going to use the decimal here of the sales. So on my calculator over here, I'm just going to enter in 850 plus point, whoops, point zero, whoops, zero 0.05. I almost did 50% of a sale. That would have been awesome. Times 5,000. And over here for his earnings, he's going to get 1,100. Now if we do that again, but this time we make it 10,000 then he's going to earn 1350 If we do it again, but we make that 15000 he earns 1600 If we do it again, and this time make it 20000 he earns 1850 And once again, we'll do it again. This time we'll make it 25000 And he's going to earn 2100 Okay, good. There's our, our table here. Now, we're going to draw a graph of this on our grid here. But before we do that, we have to decide, well, which of these is the dependent variable? Which one is the independent variable? Do sales depend on his earnings? Or does his earnings depend on his sales? And even after I say that, it, it makes sense to say earnings depend on the sales. So sales will be X, uh, earnings will be Y. So I'm going to go down here. And along my X axis right here, I'm going to put... Okay, this is going to be my sales. And my units, therefore, are going to be in dollars. Oh, you can't see that, dollars. Then I'm going to put my earnings along the y-axis. And again, the units here are going to be dollars. Okay, and th but that makes sense because the amount of money he earns depends on the amount of money he s amount of money he sells, right, or the amount that he brings in for the company here. Now, here, my ch a chart here is going five thousand, ten thousand, fifty. It's going up by five thousands here. Um, I counted this out here, so I'm going to make this. This is going to be my five thousand, one, two, three, ten thousand, one, two, three, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand. And then 25,000 out here, because that fills in that, that x-axis really quite nicely. Then I've got, if I look over here, then I take a quick look at this. Um, my graph goes 1,100, 1,300, 1,600, 1,800, 2,100 here. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come down here, and I'm going to break this graph. And I'm going to start at, let's say, 1,000. And now I'm going to go up by um, I'm going to go up by a hundred every time here. So this is going to be twelve hundred, uh, thirteen hundred, fourteen hundred, fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred, seventeen hundred, eighteen hundred, nineteen hundred, two thousand, 
2,100, 2,200 here. Okay, and that should be uh, plenty to, to see what I need to see. Now I'm gonna switch colors here. And now we're gonna plot these points. So at $5,000 here, he's going to make 1,100. So it's gonna be right there. That works out nicely here. At 10,000, he's gonna earn 1,350. So here's 13. So it's gonna be right in the middle of that, okay? Uh, at 1,500, he's gonna earn 1,600. It's gonna go, whoops, I lost track of that, which is gonna be right there. 20,000, he's going to earn 1,850, which is gonna be right in the middle. And then for 25,000, he's going to earn 2,100, which will be right there. Okay, now, that's, that's looking pretty nice here. Now, should I connect the dots? Well, probably not. Okay, probably not because, uh, I mean, we don't know exactly what it is he's selling. We don't know how he splits this up, right? Like, maybe maybe he can sell $5,000 and $1 worth of product. I don't know, but maybe he can't, right? Maybe there's, there's what it is he's selling comes in these chunks here. I don't know. I really don't have enough information to tell. Now, I am, however, going to sort of connect the dots because it's going to give me an idea of the trend of the data. That's what it's gonna look like. Now, let's answer some questions. Oh, there it is. Should they be connected or not? Well, probably not. Probably not. Um, it is not likely he can sell, okay, it's not likely he can sell any fraction of five thousand dollars, our chart goes up by five thousand, but it, it doesn't seem likely to assume that he can sell, like I said, five thousand and one dollars or five thousand dollars and fifty cents worth of material. I don't know though, okay, but don't. So, but it's a fairly good guess that he can't do that. Now, what is the slope? What does it represent? Okay, let's take a look. Let's grab let's grab two points out of here. Uh, and it doesn't really matter which two points I grab. So let's maybe grab the 5,100. And then let's grab 25,000, We'll grab the, the first point and the last point here. Okay, so 5,000, 1,100, 25,000, 2,100. So we'll write those down here. 5,000, 1,100, 25,000, 2,100. And again, I have to identify point one and point two because when I calculate my slope, remember that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to do y2 minus y1, so 2100 minus 1100 over 25,000 minus 5,000. Well, 2100 minus 1100, okay, is simply going to be 1,000. 25,000 minus 5,000 is going to be 20,000. And when you simplify that, we're going to get 1 20th. Okay, 1 20th. Now, what does it represent? Well, let's think about this. This is going to be, remember, the numerator is dollars. The denominator is dollars. But there is a difference between these, these two dollars here. They're not the same sort of thing. This is dollars earned, and this is dollars sold. Oh, so now it should start to make a little bit more sense. He earns one dollar, okay, one dollar for every twenty dollars, whoops, twenty dollars, we'll do like that, twenty dollars. Wow, man, I'm, I just every time I did that, it got worse and worse. He earns $1 for every $20 he sells. That's what the slope represents, that relationship here. Now, what's the y-intercept? Oh, well, look at that. Isn't that interesting? I don't know. I can't tell based on my graph how far back that goes. Okay? I really can't. Now, over here, though, I gave myself a little bit of a formula here. Um, 850, this is how I was calculating how much earnings he, he makes here, right? 850 plus 0 .05 times X, where X was the amount of sales that he made. Well, 
the y-intercept is going to be, okay, the y-intercept is where x equals 0. It's, it's always been like that. So let's just take a look at that. If I make x equal to 0 here, then what I'm left with is 850. Well, does that make sense? Well, actually, yeah, it does, because I can see right now that my line here is going to drop below that 1,000. So yeah, that means 850 bucks. And what, what does it represent? This is his starting salary, OK? This is how much he makes every month, and then he can make more than that depending on how much he sells. So write an equation to represent the relationship between his sales and his salary, OK? Well, let's make sales, OK, because his salary depends on his sales. Salary is y, sales will be x. So, and we had that equation before, just we weren't explicit with it here. This is going to be 850 plus 0 0.05 times x. Now, interestingly enough, everybody, 0 0.05 is the same as 1 20th. So another way I could have written this was 850 plus 1 over 20 times x. And if you're looking at that thinking, well, wait a minute. When we wrote the equation of a partial relation, we had these in another order. That is right, and you are totally welcome to do that because order does not matter with addition. So you can put that in whatever order you like here. So 1 20th times x plus 850, that's probably the way you're most familiar with looking at it. And so now let's, let's use this. How much would he earn if he sold 18,000? Okay, well that's going to be, well, let's, take, let's take that last version there, 1 20th of 18,000 plus 850. This is just calculator work. Okay, so 1 20th of 18,000 plus 850. Well, he would earn $1,750. Okay, now this last one here, if he made $1,900, how much did he sell? Okay, well, that's going the other way around. That's suggesting that we know what the y is and that we don't know what the x is. Well, once again, I've got two terms over here. So the first thing I'm probably going to do is, is subtract that 850 from both sides. So 1900 minus 850 is going to be 1050. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 1 20th. I'm going to divide by 1 20th. So this is going to be 1,050 divided by 1 20th. It's important that you get that fraction correct there. So divided by 1 20th, or divided by 0 0.05 if you'd rather do it that way. And what happens here is we get $21,000. He would need to spend, whoops, sorry, he would need to sell $21,000 to get $1,900 as his salary. Okay, so in this question here it says, Thomas is wanting to add a long distance plan to a cell service. He has a couple of options to choose between. He can go option A, which will charge $0.25 uh, dollars per minute, so 25 cents a minute. Or option B will charge $5 per month with an additional charge of 10 cents per minute. So let's write equations for both of those representing how much will they spend depending on how much minutes they use. So let's take a look at option A, option B. So how much they, they spend, there's your Y equals. Now in this first one here, it's just flat out 25 cents a minute. So which means it's going to be 0.25 cents and x is the number of minutes. So all we got to do is multiply those together. Option B, on the other hand, is going to be 0 0.10, 10 cents per minute. So we multiply the, the 10 cents times the number of minutes. But then this one here gets, uh, has a flat fee of $5 per month. So even if, they don't, even if you don't use the, the plan for a month, you're still going to pay 5 bucks, OK? Now, if Thomas uses 50 minutes of long distance per month, which one of these is cheaper? So let's take a look at A here. If he uses, if he uses 50 minutes, okay, so 0 0.25 times 50, 0 0.25 times 50, and I already have an idea what this is, but I want to make sure I get it right here, 12.50, cents. $12.50. If, on the other hand, he uses it with this other one, okay, so it's going to be 0.1 times 50 plus 5. Oh, he's going to only spend $10. 
See, this is, it's an interesting scenario here. When, it, when you get this flat rate here, when you get this flat rate, even if he doesn't use the plan, he still is going to pay $5. So it looks like this might be the more expensive one. And it probably is for a little while, but at some point in time, it becomes the cheaper one. Which brings us to the next question here. Well, how many minutes of long distance make them both the same price? Well, if they're both the same price, that means our Ys are the same. So here, here's an interesting little thing that you can do with a question like this. If the Ys are the same, then I'm going to just do this. I'm going to set these two equal to each other. This one, 0.25x is equal to y, and y is equal to 0.10x plus 5. I'm going to put them and set them equal to, to get rid of the y's, because if I'm, I'm assuming that those are the same, then this is what I get here. Well, now I'll subtract that 0.10x from, point, from both sides to bring this over. So this will end up being 0.15x is equal to 5. And then x is equal to 5 divided by 0.15. I'm just going to divide both sides by that 0.15. And now let's take a quick look. Okay. And so when I do that, when I take 5 and divide it by 0.15, I get 33.3 repeating. So basically, at 33 and a third minutes, okay, they are the same price. Oops, same price here. And notice that all I did here was take the two equations and set them equal to each other, bring that term over, and then divide. That's it. That's all I had to do.